So we're going to talk about configuration. So I, I've talked about configuration in the past. I've met with other states, and um, I think often when somebody comes in and looks at North Carolina system, uh, their Agile system, they think this is what it's going to be right out of the box. So I just want to kind of set some ground rules that we've, we've taken the system and we've configured it to um, our needs. And so, and you can do this too. Uh, with with a little bit of patience and uh, a little bit of understanding um, that I'm going to cover today, you can do this this too. So um, we we are lucky enough to have Doug with us. Doug has a, a wealth of knowledge, um, so he's going to be speaking. I have 50 slides. Uh, they're mostly just pictures. So if I don't get through these slides, it's okay. What I want to occur in this session is for you to take away something. So Feel free to raise your hand. Uh, I don't think we have any tomatoes or anything to throw, but uh, you know, just just ask. I'm going to ask you all questions, and you can ask me. I, I, as Jim would Jim um, said, I want this to be interactive. So, okay. After seeing some of the slides this morning, I've, I've modified my my show just a little bit. But day one with the Agile system. Uh, we have three modules. We have a bridge module that uh, Carrie Clemens and Dan Mueller are over. We have a pavement management module which Randy Fingers over and the maintenance module that I'm over. And this is kind of what we felt like. Uh, some shade tree mechanics working on a, I don't know what kind of car he said that was, a fast car. You know, we really didn't know what we were doing and we were in over our heads. So. Um, it really took us about five years to kind of figure the system out, get it implemented, and, and start making some changes. All right, so we'll give a little introduction about North Carolina. Um, keeping the theme from this morning, we're going to talk about barbecue, North Carolina barbecue. Um, and I'll talk about DOT, our structure. One of the questions that I get asked a lot from states that are implementing, hey, what is your organizational structure to help me to set this up and, and make it work well? And then we'll talk about some uh, configuration. All right, here's North Carolina. As Jim said, I'm a big fisherman, so our coast has great fishing. Uh, I'm in a king mackerel tournament at the end of the week, and that's, that's what I want to catch. That guy's worth about $70,000, so that's what I want to catch. Um, I was going to put NC State up here. That's where we all went to college, but the football season's not turned out the way that I've hoped, so I put the Hurricanes up here. Um, so the great thing about North Carolina is mountains uh, to coast in about seven hours. It's a great place to be. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right. I had some uh, friends call me not long ago. Some, they were in the neighborhood, and they wanted to, they were going to have a barbecue. And um, so they wanted me to bring something. And I made hush puppies and slaw and some baked beans, and I got there, and they were cooking brats. So that is not a barbecue. That's grilling, right? <laughs> that, that's, that you're grilling in the backyard. That's not barbecue. That's not barbecue either. Maybe it is in uh, Texas, but that is not North Carolina barbecue. That, my friend, is North Carolina barbecue. All right? Has anybody had North Carolina barbecue? All right. And in North Carolina, well, um, there's actually a type of barbecue named Lexington barbecue. It's a style of barbecue named after the town that I grew up in, a small town of about 18,000 um, folks. There's like 15 barbecue restaurants. Every, every corner is a barbecue restaurant. All right, so we've got the good stuff on the left. This is, this is Lexington style. It's kind of a tomato um, vinegar based, and then we've got the not so good stuff on the right. <laughs> Yeah, we, we argue over this all the time in North Carolina. This is very vinegar based. Okay, enough about that. Um, in North Carolina, we have 100 counties. We have 14 divisions. I think many of you have districts. So uh, we have 14 divisions and within the divisions, we have districts. And that's the way our, our uh, state is broken out and we manage our maintenance operations. We have a division engineer in each of these divisions that's responsible for managing the budget and so forth. Uh, Doug, who's going to be speaking, he's in this area here, Division 5. 
in the central part of the state, the division that receives the most money of any division. All right. Well, I was I uh, intentionally on the slide this morning. I did not put our mileage down because I don't didn't want to brag about that. Um, but we do have the the second largest system. We have a lot of stuff to maintain. Um, this is the map here. Oops. Um, really, there's not many roads in the state that we don't maintain. We maintain the pretty much the entire county system, um, and it is a it's a lot of work. Um, our funding has been cut over the years, just like everybody else's, so that makes the system just that much more important. A few go-live dates. Uh, we have three modules. We have MMS, BMS, and PMS. Uh, we went live back in 2000 um, on the heels of a SAP implementation. How many of y'all use SAP? Okay. Uh, how many of y'all like SAP? So, okay, all right, that's okay, that's, that's about right. Um, and so in, in North Carolina, um, SAP pays our folks. So what do you think the focus, focus was for those first years? It was how do we use SAP? So um, we have worked over the years to try to get Agile and MMS out in the field. We've hired full-time folks to go out and do training and that's worked well. Um, same thing with BMS and PMS. It, it has been a struggle, but things are, are moving forward, and, and that's a good thing. Common question that I get from other states that are implementing is, what is your structure? This is just um, what we have set up in, on the maintenance side of things right now. We have a maintenance management engineer, um, a field support engineer who basically handles all the daily operations. We have two contracted employees who go out and do field support. And then we have a, 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 what we call a business systems analyst to do kind of the technical work. Um, writing the SQL code, which is a huge part of what I'm going to show you today so you can configure your system. Get a SQL book, go, you, go to YouTube, learn SQL. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, David on the IT side is a great asset. And underneath him, we've got um, an IT manager a system spe a specialist and two analysts that help us out on a daily basis. And we really need this kind of structure to make this, this product, uh, product what, it, what it needs to be. Um, and Delbert and Lonnie, the, my bosses, we can always use more help too. So if this, if this grows, we won't complain. Um, so let's get into configuration. That's why you're here. North Carolina's General Assembly has um, been very involved with our operation. Uh, this new, new legislative staff is um, very interested in data and, and capturing that data. And so many of the configurations, uh, the changes we've done to the software are a result from legislation that they've passed. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is some legislation that was passed in 2014 uh, where they required us to put together a highway maintenance improvement plan. It's basically a three-year uh, resurfacing uh, preservation rehab program for pavements in the division. And uh, we not only had the responsibility of putting this plan together, but they wanted kind of a rolling uh, plan versus actual, if you if you will. So, we sat down and we thought, well, how are we going to do this? Some people wanted to use spreadsheets. Um, some people wanted to use access databases. I mean, we've got this agile asset system. Let's modify it and let's do it in there. Um, the line works in there. So that's really what we did. Uh, we created, as you can see here, basically. Uh, a new menu item. So um, here we've got our MMS and uh, PMS module. Randy Finger and myself went in and created a, a basically a brand new menu item and we, we labeled it HMIP. And so our 14 divisions uh, that are responsible for this plan can go to this tab and, enter, and basically enter their plan into the system. And the way that this works is they put the plan together and they submit it for the board to approve it and that becomes the baseline. So uh, the way we set this up is we basically created a window and we duplicated that window. Um, one of those would be the dynamic plan and one of those would be the baseline plan. Again, we used a lot of SQL coding to do this. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the presentation. 
But this is basically what it looks like. So the, uh, the end user can come in here, put in their mileposts, their from and twos, the treatment they're going to do. Uh, we even wrote in the system to automatically calculate the length based on our LRS in the system. Once that baseline is in and approved, we take a snapshot of that and populate another uh, data table, and we just call that the, the dynamic table. And from there, we can do all the reporting that the legislature requires us to do. I'm going to go fast. Again, lots of pictures. Um, any questions about that so far? Okay, uh, video log. Do any of you all have a pavement condition survey, an automated pavement condition survey? Yeah, which companies are you using? Pathways, Pathways. okay. So you, you, do you have the video logs? Okay, well we've got the video logs as well and we have those hosted on uh, NCDOT side of things. So I sat down with uh, our, our pavement guys and said, wouldn't it be cool if in our, um, in our inventory window, our maintenance inventory window, uh, where we have our history, well, you all are familiar with this, probably have MMS, you've got a, uh, basically a section inventory. Wouldn't it be cool if you could go and link directly to the video log that was uh, recorded with that road? And so we went in and we um, went into the system module, did some magic, and basically what we have is every road that's been video logged, we created a link that links um, from the section inventory to the video log. So not only now when a citizen calls and says, hey, you haven't been out on my road, you can get the maintenance history from this window, then you can, and, and they're talking about some type of issue, you can actually pull up the video log, ride the road, and look at the picture exactly where they're talking about. So that was a, that was a great thing for our field staff. It was fairly easy to do, but that's a configuration thing. And, you know, uh, if you got the data, all you've got to do is get the system to talk to the data. And that's where this software, in my opinion, shines. You just got to be able to know how to do that. So um, this was pretty cool. So you, you've got a G GPS, GIS map. And so this, this blue, um, this is a direct, into the, uh, direct view into the Path Web database. This area, this blue dot moves as you ride down the road. And then you can turn on a lot of different layers. Um, as you ride down. So we've, we've connected that directly in the database. Okay, um, more legislation. Um, basically, we were having some issues with citizens um, suggesting that we were not taking care of um, uh, repairs in a timely manner, so some legislation was passed. And basically, the legislation said that we will pit, uh, correct potholes in two days. Any other safety-related issue would be repaired in 10 days, and non-safety issues would be repaired in 15 days. And this is legislation, so we got to do this, right? So how are we going to do this? Well, we have another piece of software um, that we've named CARS, Citizen Action Request System. And that's the system that we were using to track all this information. So when your grandmother calls in and says, you've not been on my road in a year, uh, we would track that in the system. And that was very good for tracking the, the issue. But we wanted to track all the, the, the uh, maintenance work when the work was done. So we went in and created a link um, where now you can create a, a day card, a work order, and link back to the actual CARS request. And so you've got the total cycle. You've got where it was started, where we did the work, the total labor equipment material cost to do that work, and to close it out. That was just an added column as a link. That was, that was fairly simple to do. Yes. Yes. If I can get this to work, I will move back. There we go. So the linkage that you have there is directly to the call or, or the citizen report? And actually, it, in this case, that. it's a hot link to the database. Exactly. They still have to log into the database to get to that individual 
car's request. So if I click on the link, it brings up a sign-on, and then in yes. turn, I can log in and get directly to that. Yes. Um, did y'all happen to explore whether or not the work order could be created dynamically? We've talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, if you look at my to-do list in the future, you know, I think that would be pretty cool. Although that list is like 20 pages long. But uh, that would be a, a cool thing to do. Another concern if we do that is often somebody will call in. This never happens, I'm sure, in your DOT. But you go out there and you look at it and, well, that's off our right away. We're not going to do that. Or that's not an issue. And so the idea of kind of filling up our, our field user's day card window, if you will, with work that um, may not need to be done was, you know, I've kind of toyed with that. Yeah, sure. Um, Lonnie, Lonnie mentioned uh, that the Highway Patrol also uses this system um, when there's guardrail damaged or something. So um, then we can create our task and, and reimburse for, for guardrail repairs. One other question, if I may, you were talking about your linkage to the road, road videos that you had from PathWeb. Right. So that's hosted somewhere else. It's not within the system itself. It, for it, no, we've, we, yeah, it's not hosted within the, in the Agile software, but we have it on a server in-house. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. That is true. Uh, but if you didn't hear that, it, it, if you're in the network, it does carry you directly to the database. You don't have to log in. And I've got a lot of folks here, so I cannot lie to you today. So they're going to keep me straight. <laughs> the other, <laughs> I didn't say that, but OK. Um, we, we are doing quite a bit of inventory capture. Um, Seeing some of the things that Michael showed this morning make me very excited. Uh, we probably won't do this in the future, but this is what we're doing now. We're using um, Collector to go out and, and uh, capture inventories. Um, things like our MCAP survey, small pipe inventories where we go out and capture each pipe. And then we're bringing those into the system, and we can create work orders against those pipes and those assets. We can map those as far as GIS maps go. Now, these are actually the, the ferry division has gotten very interested in our system. So uh, maintenance management is more than just kind of road maintenance. We're doing a lot of our ferry assets, managing those conditions and those expenditures in the software. And that's a quick screenshot of uh, the, the inventory table and the corresponding shape file that we've uploaded that we can do some mapping on. Um, as far as our condition assessment goes, we uh, assess about 23,000 tenth of a mile road sections each year. And uh, again, we're using those, um, we're capturing that data on a tablet. And this is where the magic happens. Once they go out and they capture that data, it's, it's loaded into a, um, the Oracle database, which is in the back end of MMS, into the data tables. This is the stuff right here, guys. I mean, if you really want to do configuration, know your tables. Uh, you can create views from those tables through SQL language, and you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we've built our, our allocation process around that data. We've built performance appraisals and scorecards around that data using Jasper reports. I think there's a Jasper report um, session going on next door. Really good stuff, and that's where the configuration and the reporting really comes into play. For those that have SAP, um, as far as getting our folks paid, we would go out and do a task or a work order in the field, and um, then that data was entered into our financial system often wrong. So we created an outgoing interface, so when um, they, the folks field employees come in in the morning, they create a work order. The work order information is actually sent over to SAP. And when the clerk enters the time, all she or he has to do is enter the task number and all the work order data pre-populates in their timesheet, which was great and it cut down on the number of errors that we, we had. Um, moving on to pavement condition, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm speeding up a little bit. I think we have until 2.15 or so. Um, 
Anybody modified your decision trees in the pavement in pavement management? Okay. All right. Good. Well, you you probably know that that's uh, that's easy to do. It's basically just a right click option where you can right click and um, modify a decision tree. Again, we had legislation to basically say, hey, we're prohibited to use a chip seal in a subdivision um, unless we use it in conjunction with a fog seal. So we basically came in, right clicked on this uh, leg of the tree and modified that in about two minutes. So that was, that was very nice. Okay. Um, again, this is something we did a year or so ago, one of the complaints that I was getting is, hey, I want to create a map, and I want to make it, it needs to be easier. Um, we were having to go into a mapping window and pull in data, and it was just taking a lot of time. So I basically wrote a, a window um, using work order information, which allows, and then we build a new menu item, a new window called, I called it task location mapping. Uh, I'm, I am an engineer, and I'm, so I'm not very good at naming things, but um, I, I felt like they could read that and they would understand what that meant. But basically what it does is it allows them to come in and filter the window for either um, pending work orders or completed work orders. They can highlight this grouping. In this case, hey, they want to show all their pavement widening. Then they've got an option to show on map, and ta-da, there's a map. Um, just really that, that quick. And they don't have to go in to some type of Jasper report or some type of mapping window. You know, they just filter this window, right click, show it on a map. And this is being used all across the state, but it's really great for um, a crew leader and, and his, the folks under him, he can say, hey, this is where you're going to work today. Uh, we're using that a lot. So um, really didn't know Michael was going to talk about this today, but we are using Esri Online. Cool thing about the system is it's more than just just the system. You can take the data out of the system and publish it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So we are using Esri Online. We call that Go and See in North Carolina. Again, SQL data views where we can pull all this information together and we publish that to Go and See. This is where Doug comes in and Doug's gonna talk about how Division 5 is using this data to make better decisions. some time for the 15 minute sign to go up just about there all right so um let's see here so i i for uh, i'm a field guy uh, spent all my career in the field until recently um Initially, when we were selecting routes, we'd send out our road maintenance foreman and say, hey, go give me a list of roads to pave. And he'd come back with a list of roads to pave, and we'd go pave them. Uh, it worked pretty well. But then uh, years go by, and we started getting into the Agile system, and uh, we could get databases and Excel spreadsheets that would say, okay, um, here's some good candidates, or here's your pavement condition data, or, and it helped us sort where we wanted to go with it. Um, now we're, this is a screenshot which you, nobody can read, of the three-year HMIP. Uh, that's our three-year resurfacing plan that we've been legislated to develop. Um, I've recently moved to the Raleigh area and got tasked with coming up with the Wake County resurfacing program. Uh, Wake County has about, well, our, our division has 15,000 lane miles and about a million and a half people. Um, so it, it was a pretty daunting task. The first thing I did, though, was take what was in the existing HMIP and export it as a shape file and publish it to the GoNC map. Um, we found that that really makes a lot more sense for somebody that's not familiar with the system uh, to, to know where we're planning on going. Uh, so we pushed it out and we looked a little closer at it. Here's our downtown, uh, downtown Raleigh. And you start noticing things when you can see it as a picture that you can't see by looking at a data table. Uh, for instance, there's a light, oh, I'm holding it upside down. Right up here, you know, it looks like that road should connect, so we dig a little digging, and these don't end at the same place. 15 minutes from remaining, all right. Um, so then I, on top of that data, I took our historic data, which is also in the asset management system, and pushed it out um, as another data layer. 
So now the dark green is things that we've resurfaced, and I just chose eight years as a good place to start with. Um, so I can see, all right, this leg that was here, uh, we've already resurfaced it. So if I want to know a little more about it, you can enable the pop-ups, and I can see, all right, in 2012, I resurfaced it, put an inch and a half as our final layer. Probably don't need to do that one again. So you can modify. So it's a way to easily look at your data and, and make some decisions. So we published our pavement condition data. And, uh, so green's good, yellow's f fair, and red's poor. The, and this is a section of Wake County. When you look at it as a picture, you, you can start seeing things that you wouldn't when you look at a data table. For us, one of the big things that we saw is that all these little squiggly lines, those are our subdivisions. Our, our subdivisions are in really bad shape. Um, so maybe we need to start focusing there. But going back to the, our downtown, um, so now with that pavement data, the good, fair, poor, you can scroll in. And one of the things we saw is, OK, we're up here. We, we added that SR2900, so that's a good thing to have picked up on. And then you start looking at roads around it. Well, here's a road that our pavement condition is 18. And that wasn't on our radar before. It was a road that we need to resurface, and it's now on our radar. But we could also take, and it gives you uh, some of the recommended treatments um, and the location. But we also pulled in our TIP projects. And as a maintenance guy, I don't always know what's going on with our TIP side of the house. But you, when we pull it on top of the other layer, you can see, OK, we've got a, a TIP project here to construct dedicated bike lanes for a million dollars. Well, we wasn't on our, our radar to resurface. And they were going to, next year, take and put a million dollars into a road that was a pavement condition rating of 18. Can we advance this? Um, can we slow down the TIP and advance our contract resurfacing and better use that million dollars that we're putting down as for paint markings? The other thing we could do with our data in the, uh, in, it's our GoNC, or AGOL platform, is pull in other, other governmental agencies' data. So we, here we have the, our, I guess it's Diener, or what? Our environmental folks like to, there are certain times when we go over certain classifications of water that we have to do additional permitting. Um, so we, you could pull, we pulled in the, the their, let's see here, the NC1 map hydrology, which has um, ORWNS, and that means something to folks other than me. Um, but I know that's bad, and whenever we have that, uh, we have to go do something. So I, you can filter and go NC and say, okay, just show me all my ORWs or NSW routes or waters populates it as another map layer. And I'll, instead of going through one map and tables and, and charts and trying to pull us together, it's easy to say, OK, I've got a conflict here. Here I'm resurfacing, and here's a, a, a stream that they're very concerned about. So we need to do some permit investigation. The other benefit that my manager likes about the system is that uh, is the ability to pull in other data layers from other places and to be able to show somebody this is what we plan on doing in our region. So here, uh, we've got a mix of what we're going to resurface. And we have a mix with the STIP projects and division managed projects, all this stuff that we're planning on doing in the next few years. And we pulled in the legislative districts on top of there. So now when he goes out to meet with a, the senator for this area, he can show him a map on his iPad and say, OK, this is your area. This is what we're doing. Do you have any questions? And if he has a question about a particular road, you can click on it and say, OK, whoop. And you can say, OK, um, yep, that road's on our list for resurfacing. We let it in June of 2016. It's not quite done yet. And it's assigned to the resident engineer Moore. And, and we're on our, on our way. Or, you can say, no, sorry, sir, this is what your money will do as far as contract resurfacing in three years. If we need to do more than this, then um, you need to look at our funding, because this is what we can do with what you have. And it makes it very simple to convert, take tables to pictures that are easily communicated to others. So we're real excited about what you guys are planning and with all that. Yes, sir. You can't in the AGO, well, 
I'm not a GIS person. Uh, I'm an engineer. Um, so you might. I, I know in, in what we did was took the, the data from the, from the, from the data, from uh, Agile, published it out into, or made it as a shape file, put it into ArcMap, edited it to make it look like we wanted to make it, and then published it back out. But in ArcMap, there's a lot more functionality than AGOL. So in there, yes, I mean, we could, you can do a lot more there. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so, when you say you're publishing this out to uh, ArcGIS Online, um, are you, is this a live link to the database in Agile? So it's a sort of, it's refreshed with a periodic basis, or is it that you actually have to sort of manually execute to make that happen? You can uh, have it automatically populate out. Uh, what we're running into is the data that I was particularly interested in um, was not something that we wanted to publish externally and uh, all our servers that we had at, the t at this time are externally facing. So we're working with our IT to take and do something more internal. Um, and when that happens, it'll, we, we can make a change in the AMS system, or in the PMS system, and the next day, uh, it'll add the line work. It updates overnight. Um, now, if it's just a, a change in an existing field, like if we um, shorten a length or change a treatment type, that automatically updates immediately. But adding new stuff in, takes the overnight update on the GM metrics of it all. Well, with that, I'll turn it over to our master presenter. <laughs> all right, three more slides, and you don't have to listen to me anymore. Okay, so 90% of the things that I showed you today were done through the creation of making a new window. And so I'm not sure how many of y'all have created a new window in the system. Hey, okay, three, that's, that's good. Um, so I just wanted to run through those, those steps um, and, and kind of sh sh show you what we did. So basically, create a table or a view. Uh, again, this is where your SQL skills come into play. Um, I am, I'm a civil engineer. I knew nothing about SQL. I remember when um, Neil Mastin came in and said, uh, I had a question for him, and he said, well, just write some SQL code to do that. What, what, how do you even spell SQL? You know, I had no idea. That's not something I learned in engineering school. So uh, YouTube and uh, a little bit of Google Foo, and uh, I figured it out. So um, write a table or create a view. Uh, load that into your system, and uh, in this case, I am going to a system module and going to find a view. Okay. And then there's this great feature where you basically find your table or view and right click on it and make a window. And it's basically that easy. Um, then basically the next step is to maybe pick which uh, menu you want it to be or where you want it to reside in the system. And that's really how we're doing the majority of our configuration. I mean, there is some back end stuff that David's group does for us. Um, but for the most part, the windows are just created on the front end through data tables, data views, make window. And that is my 50th slide. That's it. We had one, yeah, I had a question in the back. Yeah. That module. Um, if you remember going back to my org chart, uh, there's like, there's, there's basically three of those groups, one for payment, one for bridge, and one for maintenance. There are probably a total of nine folks in the department, maybe 12 that have access to that, but it's basically the users in those, those groups. So a user in the field would not have the ability to do that. It, it, the reason we had to do that, it was due to the legislation and our line, there were some line work issues with using uh, the existing system and so we uh, recreated a window, so to speak, and, and set it up in a way that our field folks are basically saying, hey, this resurfacing project needs to go from 1010 road to, um, you know, SR 1012 
where the system was not really set up for them to uh, keep track of their projects like that. So it was really an issue with the way the legislation required us to track the work. Um, a different ver uh, so the question was have we upgraded to a new version since we've been writing the SQL um, SQL code I started writing the SQL code in 65 I think and we're in 69 so it was um, I w we haven't had any issues with that mostly do you know in the Jasper reports and the and the new windows you know it was all handled during the upgrade Oh, yeah. Another question? Somebody else? Oh, okay. Hey. Um, your maintenance engineers use EMS to select the vacant projects, or they all come from the maintenance uh, We have our staff maintenance engineers in the field, and we have division folks, and they're, they're choosing those um, through a variety of ways, right? If you, do y'all want to talk about how you do that? Uh, we got, if that clock's right, we have five minutes. So, yeah. Four. Four, okay. Four. Rand, Randy does provide to the division staff basically an instantaneous treatment. You know, if you were going to go and do some work on this road today, what would that treatment be? Now, and that's provided through the, the system uh, in a window that they can log in and look at. Now, how often do they use that recommended treatment? You all can answer that, but, but we, you know, we have that capability. Yeah, that the it's great for um, estimating needs from a monetary point of view because you've got each individual small ma uh, pavement section that has a recommended treatment. But as Lonnie said, when that road is made up of ten different type of treatments, when you try to make a project out of that, that's where it kind of falls apart. Okay, let's give Matthew and uh, Doug a big hand. Thank you.